let's chat to Alex first. Well. Hey, brother. <laughs> Hello. Absolutely delighted to meet you. That is. Service is nice. Here. <laughs> That is, that was a phenomenal documentary. Um, I think you heard the crowd in front of me absolutely loved it. Um, yeah. I, I was going to ask you what was what was a bigger feat for you, the the Oscar a couple of nights ago climbing that wall. But after watching that documentary, you've answered the question. The wall, no doubt. Um, yeah, for sure. How are you feeling off the boat? I mean, the Oscar was a big thing and the war was a big thing. I mean, how is life for you at the moment? On top of the world? <laughs> I'm not actually, I, I just woke up. We're, we're still recovering from the Oscars and all the after parties. It's, uh, I'm, I'm pretty tired, honestly. But, um, but no, certainly doing the climb was far more important to me and, and, uh, and uh, far more challenging. Yeah, especially, I mean, uh, I'm a producer myself and with a film crew there and people watching you the whole time and and the, and the fear of falling in front of your friends, I mean, that must have been the hardest thing. The question I want to know is, if you were to do something like this again, and I'm sure in your mind, you must be thinking of what's next, would you document the whole process again? Uh, I mean, well, I mean, we just won an Oscar, so obviously that's pretty validating to the whole process of, of, of documenting the climb. Yeah. But, um, I mean, obviously it's always more fun to just go climb with your friends and not have to think about cameras and, and production. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a balance. You know, I mean, with, uh, with El Cap, I knew that if I did it without a camera there, that, um, that basically as soon as I finished, somebody would want to come back and shoot photos and shoot video on it anyway. So it actually kind of made more sense to just document the whole process and, and shoot it from the beginning. You know, it really depends on the specific project whether or not it makes sense to film on it. Is it, is it a competitive climbing world out there? Is there someone who's going to try and beat you next and then are you going to try and trump them afterwards? Or is it or is it all kind of for yourself? I think it's mostly, I mean, particularly free soloing is mostly for yourself. I don't think it's very competitive. But you never know. I mean, maybe somebody will do it next year. Yeah. They'll do it back. I mean, uh, you know, time, time will tell. You've done a lot of free solos, thousands of them. Was there ever a point in any one of those where you were stuck on the middle of a rock and you thought, what the heck am I doing here? Uh, yeah, definitely I've had many, many moments like that. Though, to be fair, I've had many moments like that climbing with a rope as well, where I think, you know, why am I climbing? I hate this. I wish I was back at home yeah. or, you know, and or whatever. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it certainly happens sometimes. But I think every climber experiences that, uh, you know, just getting too far outside their comfort zone and wishing they were somewhere else. Okay, so I've got about 10 questions here from our audience, so I'm going to read through them. The first one's very simple. Why? <laughs> That's, well, um, I don't know. Hopefully the film answered that to some extent, but just because it's such a, such an obvious challenge, because because I could, because it's possible. I mean, just, um, I don't know. I mean, why does anybody do anything hard? Cool, good answer. As an average climber, what is the one thing, skill, technique, that would be most effective at making me a better climber? Uh, the thing I always tell beginners is to work on a footwork, work on technique, work on body position, the way they move their body, the way they weight their feet, the way, you know, because your legs should be driving you upward. So I think as a beginner, you should just focus on how you move on the wall and, and how you use your feet. How do you overcome the fear? Because surely in the beginning, you, you were scared of, of, of an average height, and then the more you practice, surely the, does the fear go away, or is the fear always in the back of your head somewhere? But I think that's exactly what you see in the, the two years of the film, is uh, you know, the practice, the preparation, and the, the gradual expansion of my comfort zone until things that used to seem quite scary are just uh, now relatively comfortable. Um, I mean, so it's not so much overcoming fear necessarily as it is getting comfortable with something until it's not scary anymore. I mean, those are sort of the same idea, but, but, um, but you know, because I think overcoming fear, you can do that when you just take a deep breath and you're like, here we go, and just go for it, you know, but to really feel comfortable doing something, you can't just go for it like that. You have to, you know, actually feel comfortable. You have to build up to it over time and, and uh, be prepared. I mean, for us watching, watching the movie, and I can speak for half the people in here, just the shots of, of, of looking down, I had my heart in my throat. <laughs> well, like, obviously, yeah. <laughs> do you uh, do you look down when you're climbing, or is it always just looking up? 
No, I mean, you have to look at your feet every every two moves, so I mean, you're looking down half the time. Um, but also, I mean, in the two years that I spent preparing and, and the eight years I spent before that up on El Cap, I mean, I've, I've climbed El Cap eight times of the ropes. I mean, I've spent a ton of time up on the wall, you know, enjoying the exposure, enjoying the position. Yeah. It's all, it's all part of the experience. Okay. Now, I know there's, there's, there's more difficult routes going up El Cap, right? Yeah. Yeah, there okay. are. So this leads to the next question here. What's the next challenge after something this big? Is it perhaps another route? Oh, um, actually, I mean, I do want to climb some of the harder routes on El Cap, but with a rope. Um, you know, I don't know if I ever need to free solo anything else on El Cap. But, but you never know. I mean, honestly, uh, the film tour ended yesterday, or basically today. And so, uh, you know, I need a couple of months of just climbing by myself to see what I get excited about. Got it. How do you carry on going when you get totally fatigued? And what mental training do you do to complete a feat like this? Uh, well, so the idea is to not get that fatigued. I mean, the idea is to train and prepare to the point where I don't get super fatigued. Because if I was really tired, I mean, I shouldn't be up free soloing on a big wall if, I, if I'm tired and I think I'm going to fall. Um, but then in terms of mental preparation, well, I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, just visualizing training, it's all just part of the, the preparation. You know, it's, it's just, you know, I mean, you practice. I mean, did you watch the movie? You guys see the movie? I mean, <laughs> I think most people were too scared to look. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You gotta uncover your eyes and watch the part where I practice. <laughs> how's, how's, how's your family and your girlfriend and everyone doing now that it's done, you know? Do they, do they want you to stop? Do they want you to carry on? No, I mean, that, that's interesting because at this point, it'll be, um, you know, it's over a year and a half since I did the free solo. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been climbing normally and I just spent the last six months just touring with the film all over the yeah. world and, and supporting the film. And so in a lot of ways, the actual free solo feels like, I don't want to say ancient history, but it's almost two years ago. You know, it's, uh, and I haven't really done any serious soloing since then, but that's also because I've been touring with the film a lot. Uh, I don't know, so I mean, we'll, you know, we'll see. I mean, right now I'm focused more on trying to, trying to climb harder grades, trying to support climb harder, but we'll, we'll see how it all plays out. You still in the same relationship? Yeah, 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 still signing. Oh, well, yeah. well done. Thank you. A big round of applause. So, is she speaking about children yet? Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, it's, we're, we're gradually trending in that direction. <laughs> you do real, realize once the kids come, the, the climbing career is over, especially the free solo. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> Um, we'll see. Thankfully, she's a bit younger than me, so, uh, so it buys me a little time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the movie, it looked like you were the boss in the relationship. I was thinking I could learn a thing or two from you. Ooh, I definitely don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, the tide, is, the tide has turned. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I might sound, uh, I might sound insensitive sometimes in the film, but I, I think she's the real boss, for sure. Well, you've got a good lady there, because, uh, I mean, I'm sure she goes through through a lot of hell with you because uh, you seem like a stubborn guy from time to time but uh, I want to congratulate you and I'm sure everyone around the world's congratulating you at the, t at the moment because I mean you've, you've conquered this personal conquest for yourself but you've also earned an Oscar at the same time so to you and your team very well done and from all of us in South Africa we're proud and we'd love to have you here down in uh, Johannesburg and Cape Town soon. No, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to be down there climbing again. It's some of the best rock in the world. So enjoy. You know. And we look forward to the next movie. Thank you so much. Give a big round of applause.